Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, where we have reached Alpha 7, Alpha 7.4, as is indicated by the bottom right hand side. Uh, before I forget to mention it and proceed with the video, I have started a page slash created a page on my website where you can now send in your own scenarios. Link is in the description down below. I'm going to start ignoring the comment section, the scenarios more and more and more. The reason why I'm going through this by uh, having them sent in by email or at least through the form on my website, which means I get an email, is because it is easier to keep an oversight of what is coming in and to make it a bit easier for me to structure these things when on stream because people started sending me the scenarios through Discord, through comment section, through sometimes uh, Steam, sometimes through Twitch. It's just becoming a little hectic. So I'm going to streamline it and it is only going to be through my website. Everything else I'm going to start ignoring. Now, somebody who already sent in his scenario was Todd and the story is that a German battleship is raiding Allied shipping. You're playing as the British or the US, but only have a small selection of ships available, which consists of three battlecruisers of your design. The attack will be 1940 for both teams. The Germans have a single battleship and four destroyers. Your goal is to sink the battleship and extra points for destroyers. This is an all or nothing scenario. If you lose all of your ships, you are sunk. So good luck. Or sorry, if all your ships, uh, you lose if all your ships are sunk. That makes a lot more sense. I do not need to have any transports by the looks of it, which is actually really, really beneficial for me. The starting range, as indicated, was 22,000 meters, so long range gunnery is going to be a priority. And I cannot just slap big guns onto the battle cruisers because I'll also have to contend with a couple of destroyers. If they are long range, then that's going to be a problem, at least long range torpedoes. But, and this is critical, in 7.4, in the Alpha 7, the supposedly now have more capacity of dealing with enemy torpedoes. The torpedoes are no longer as big of a threat as these ships now also get access to hydro. And this goes also for battleships. Now they are no longer as powerful. I think it was up to a 300% torpedo spotting range. So it's not that powerful anymore, but it's still very potent having sonar on your bigger ships to at least give you a bit of a heads up and that you don't eat a broadside of torpedoes, but maybe just one or two. Okay, battlecruiser. I think battlecruisers rely more on survivability through speed than through armor. So let's say that these guys go 38 knots. For this scenario, we are supposedly escorting a convoy, I believe. Yeah, a German battleship is raiding. So I'm going to have long range. I know it's not critically required for this scenario, but whatever. Displacement. Let's see, how big does these ships get? 50,000 tons. That also gives them a turning circle of a kilometer and a half. If I wanted to build an interceptor of sorts, because that's probably what these battle cruisers would be, I would not want a terribly large ship. I would not have a ship that's capable of going quick. I want to have a ship that's capable of intercepting and having bigger guns and pretty much follow the, at least as far as I understand it, um, the running theory on battle cruisers, which is if you can outgun it, you can win. If you cannot outgun it, you can outrun it. So speed and maneuverability in case I need to fall back. And otherwise, just make sure you use all that speed to intercept and quickly gun down your enemy targets. I'm going to go for fairly heavy defenses, but I don't want to go all the way float 3 because it's going to add quite a bit to hull weight. Citadel, um, the lesser hull weight the better. So that's going to be a turtle back armor. Which is interesting because you'd think that an all or nothing scheme actually has a bit less than a turtle back armor scheme. But this gives 15% to hull weight and this gives 12%. This, however, makes your flash fire chance and your ammo detonation chance quite a bit lower. Which I think that on a battle cruiser is not a luxury I can really just forego. Let's go for electrical turrets, semi-auto loaders. Why not the best? Well, if I click the best on every single scenario, it's just going to get quite boring. So I'm trying to alternate my designs a bit and trying to get some different designs where you don't always have the absolute best. 
I'm going to try and stay at range. So I want gun long range accuracy and not the coincidence rangefinder. Just stereoscopic. Modern tower 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1. Weight goes up pretty much. This is 6,750 tons versus 4,320. But this gives you a 51 to, bu to long range accuracy versus only 46. Uh, higher base accuracy, higher aiming speed. Yeah, I think this is going to be worth it. The challenge might be to fit a secondary tower on here. Holy shit, that's a big secondary tower. These things do add quite a bit of base accuracy, though. Well, it fits, but only just. Right, that does not leave a lot of room for weaponry. Um, how am I going to fit that? Let's do some funnels first, see if I can get up to engine efficiency. What are we currently looking at? 100%, okay. No, you cannot have one on the secondary tower. So this is quite a lot of wasted real estate by the looks of it. Can you at least put a casemate in there or a secondary or something? Not a 5 inch, not a 4 inch. Not even a three inch. So why is all this space open? What does that actually get me if I cannot actually point any weapon system in it? Let's see, I've been using five inch duels quite a lot. Let's go for six, in oh, six, six inch singles don't quite work. These have pretty good accuracy, ranging out to 10.8. Mm hmm. I do really like the look of the five inch dual barrel though. So there seems to be a slot here, but it just doesn't fit. Duals, triples, it doesn't matter. If it's a two inch, it just doesn't fit. Now, what can I maximally or maximally put on here? Is that three inch? Yeah. That should hate me in the destroyer defense. Now, I think I'm going to have a lot of four weight offset and trying to balance that out is not going to be easy. Because you have this massive aft of the ship. And I think the only real way to start balancing this out is to either use a small amount of main caliber on the bow which would kind of negate the whole strategy that I'm going with, which is to try and look at that, which is to try and have a ship that's capable of intercepting by just going full bow in and trying to get to the target as quickly as possible. So I guess I'm going to have to up the displacement a bit. Maybe to there. This is 40. When does it start shrinking again? 41? Yeah, there. That seems an arbitrary number. 41, 400 is the magic number. Curious. At least now I have a bit more room over here on the bow to actually set up some better turrets. I think it's going to be a fairly standard design. Uh, Mark 3s, I got 15 inch Mark 4s. Is that enough? To blow holes in a battlecruiser or in a, a battleship. Moreover, I don't think. Oh, <laughs> they're a bit too heavy. Maybe more than just a bit, actually. What is so heavy on this ship? I wonder. Because they're like really heavy. Four weight offset, fifteen percent. What am I supposed to do with all of this real estate here on the stern? Oh, that's the maximum now. Oh, they changed that. Normally, you could just hold control and drag them even further out to the stern, but they changed that. This is now the maximum. Hmm. I don't quite like this, because it's going to mean that I'm going to have far less firepower than I would arguably like to have. These reload in 37.9 seconds, which is all right. But I've seen a lot better. 
Put a couple of quintuples on this turn. Yeah, firing out to 14-2. They also changed the torpedoes a bit. You have the oxygens, you have the electrics. These get you lots, lots, lots less range. Or at least a detection range and a lot more accuracy. Uh, and the range is now 12.1. Let's put some big torpedoes on there, 24 inch. And maybe also put those... That fits. Oh, that's a really narrow firing angle. Yeah, that means I have to turn almost broadside in order to launch those torpedoes. Never mind. I could put them here. Just another quintuple. But firepower, I'm very concerned with. I could go smaller, but then at range, I don't think I stand really a good chance to try and penetrate all that armor that the battleship's probably bringing. How am I going to balance this out? Hmm... I could go for super heavy shells, so at least that something that does hit has more penetration. Let's say the target is operating at 20,000 meters, maybe 17 and a half. With these guns, I can punch through 19.3 inches of deck armor, which is pretty significant. But of course, it might not be enough, depending on how big that battleship is going to be. Put some more deck armor on here. Oh, I can barely fit a lot. I might have to rely on my torpedoes a fair bit. Let's put a lot more on the turret top. Last thing I want to have is a flash fire when my turrets just fly off. Because I don't have that many turrets to begin with. 11.5, six and a half inch on the conning tower. That's a lot less than I was hoping for. The secondaries could be pretty important here to try and keep the rest of the ship alive against the enemy destroyers. Then again, it's a battle cruiser. It's not really supposed to put up a straight fight with a battleship. So I might be using the ship entirely wrong. We shall see. Now I could have opted for smaller guns and just more of them. The reason why I didn't do that is because I'm not sure if they have enough pen against the enemy battleship. Status? What's the enemy battleship doing? Seemingly... That's... Oh shit. Oh shit. What sort of behemoth is this? That's 12 guns on the bow. And another 6 on the stern. Sweet Jesus, what sort of monstrosity are you? This is going to get fun. I have six barrels per ship for a total of 18. This battleship also has 18 guns, but it's just the one ship. One thing that I can potentially do is use my speed and try to keep behind it. And that way, it won't be able to use all of those bow-mounted turrets. Mostly these things here. Already the first hit. Deck extended. And the stern penetration for 21 damage. And just rely on maneuverability. And I think that these are, in fact, destroyers. But destroyer leaders. Which is the first time that I've ever seen the AI use them. They are pretty much drawn up as... Complete gunboats? No, here's a torpedo turret. Amidships. Wow, we're actually doing some damage. 31, 21, 34. Impressive. Those 15 inch guns are apparently capable of punching holes in that ship, at least for now. We got the palace, invincible and furious. Now, I'm keeping in mind that I cannot lose a single battle cruiser, because that means scenario over. Secondaries target this incoming warship. 
which is presumably that destroyer leader that's rushing in. And these are the other destroyers that they have. Come here. Yeah, same design. I'm not sure if that battleship's completely dialed in yet. I hope it's not. I hope it's still going to be missing because of all of that speed that I have on this ship. 5 inch and 3 inch are now ready. I'm not going to allow the launch of torpedoes because it probably doesn't make a lot of sense against this destroyer. No, I don't have a lot of 5 inch guns on this ship. Just the ones there and there. The rest is 3 inch. The 3 inch and they have a range of 7.7. .7. So, relying on the 3 inch means that the destroyer has gotten very, very close. But I think that that might be what that gunboat wants. Because the farther it is away, the less chance it has to actually shoot. And the torpedoes aren't going to be very effective in their current position anyway. I'd say this, interestingly, and seemingly coincidentally, coincidentally uh, accidentally as well, would be a very, very, very good raider of enemy convoys. Because the enemy convoys, they don't really need torpedoes. You don't need to torpedo them, you just need to gun them down. Especially all of those guns over there, which I think are three inch. They'd be perfect to just blow holes in enemy transports. They are starting to approach pretty... Pretty close here. They are officially in 3 inch gun range. But this ship is going at such a speed that it's going to be hard to catch it. You know what? I am going to torp these guys. Because there is a line of 3 more ships coming in. There we go. Torpedoes away. Let's see if my sister ships are also doing that. Invincible? Not yet. Furious? Not yet. This guy is doing loops. Which could mean that there are torpedoes in the water. Let's hope that that new sonar system is going to be capable of defending me against that. I want my secondaries to go aggressive. Just shoot, you have your slightest chance of doing that. Just a small chance of hitting is sufficient. Whoa. Is that a fire on the destroyer? It got hit by a 5 inch and a 3 inch. Nice. Unexpected. Because we're only firing with an accuracy of 0.8 and 0.6. But they're putting out a lot of fire. Every 4.5 seconds, one of those shells flies out. Oh, hold on, we're switched to the destroyer with the main guns as well. That's not really what I want. Shift, alt, right click. Main target's gonna be the battleship. V1. Oh shit, it has torpedoed. Incoming! No, I shouldn't be turning to starboard, I should be turning to port. Away from the flash fire on the destroyer. She has a lot of turrets that can be popped. Which one did go? One of midships? Maybe? I think my torpedoes haven't done much. Let's see how much... Yeah, they got sonar 3. Good luck hitting anything that has sonar 3 on it. I do like to play by these destroyers. Because normally destroyers are very reluctant to come in. They just hide behind the skirts of the battleship. But this time around, it is different. This time they're actually coming in aggressively. And they are potentially going to make it very difficult on me. Because sure, I will see some of the torpedoes coming, but I probably won't catch all of them in time. So I'm keeping a very close eye on what these torpedo launchers are doing. And so far, so good. And I'll just continue to harass that battleship. I think that these destroyer leaders are also out turning their own turrets. 
do you have? Electro hydraulic turrets. So they should be quick. But they just keep doing loops. And that makes it difficult for them to actually get those guns on target. Not even going into the whole question of, is that effective? Does it make sense to try and uh, actually get a 5-inch, sorry, a 4-inch shell landed on a battlecruiser? Alright, hold off on the torps. Apparently we already did launch them. What's the range on these? 12-7. Visibility, minus 73%. So I won't see them until they're on top of me. That is... Inconvenient, shall we say. How's identification on the battleship? Yeah, here we go. We got the Hanover. So she has... 16... No, 18... 17-inch guns. Yikes. They're not accurate. And I even managed to ricochet one of them. What sort of rangefinder do you have? Coincidence Rangefinder 2? Curious. I would think that they would go with the best rangefinder that they can get. But they didn't. They went with range radar, generation 2 radar, but not a very good rangefinder. Alright. The V4 continues to take a lot of damage. But I'm not sure if we're going to be able to sink this thing anytime soon. Because she's very good at fighting the flooding. Bulkheads? Few. Bulkheads? Many. I hope that with that recent patch, Alpha 7, that they are also just going to make sure that the battleships have a lot more armor. and Or maybe not so much more armor, but more bulkheads. Because the bulkheads were always weak on these ships. It's like they weren't really making an effort. We got a little pre launch from the V2. All ships are hard to starboard. V3 is ready to launch. V1 is also ready to launch. I think the torpedo launcher is just not really quick enough. Oh, actually. Yeah, it is on target. But she's probably concerned about the safety of the V3 and that she might actually hit that one instead. On accident. Let's see, now she's turning back to starboard. Torpedo turret. It's not turning very well. Look at that. Oh, there we go. Now it's turning. Ish. Hit. Armor. None. Really? Normally, at least, they put some sort of armor on the destroyers, but they didn't even do that this time around. over very slowly getting taken apart. Uh, guys, start turning. This, these DDs is now been reduced to three kilometers, a little under four. That hopefully also gives me a bit more accuracy on them. Uh oh, that was a full start, full broadside, I think. Missing completely against the palace. Any eye on those torpedoes yet? Nothing as of yet. I can send up my own torpedoes, but these are both very maneuverable and they have sonar 3. So I think going for a uh, torpedo attack is just a big waste of my time. The only thing that I could try to hit with a torpedo is the Hanover. Once the destroyers are dead. So it's time to turn back again. Making sure I open up the range against the battleship. And hopefully not getting hit by one of those massive broadsides. And then once the destroyers are dead and their sonar is crippled, then launch a torpedo attack against the Hanover. Because right now, if I launch the DD here, the V2 is probably going to spot it and act on it. V3, V1. V1 is ready, still. Palace. Turn back a bit. 
Now we've already inflicted 1800 damage and they've inflicted exactly 2. 2.3 points of damage. Now credit where credit is due, that these are getting better at actually trying to engage. But then when they get close, they need more work. Because when they get close, they just sort of stop. They stop their attack. And I don't quite get why. They should have been just charging me down and trying to torpedo me, but they're not doing that. That's something that can still be improved about the game. Now, we've got a bit of flooding on this ship. Many bulkheads, however, and anti-flood one together should allow it to very quickly both seal the flooding and just negate the damage that it might have taken from that. Invincible is the target currently of the Hanover. Fortunately, not very accurately. V2 and V3 are both ready, but they're not torpedoing. Now, I know I'm showing a lot of broadside to the Hanover at a range of 13. But I want to make sure that the guns that I have available are actually firing. And yes, that is a risk. It is a trade-off. Because if I do get hit, I have a very high chance that I instantly lose one of my battlecruisers. A salvo of 17 inch shells. It's not fun. But their accuracy is only 1.3%. Versus my 24. Even at this high speed. You could argue, well, you should slow down, because ships which are usually a bit slower get a bit more accuracy. Yeah, but that also means that the battleship gets a lot more accuracy. So I'd rather just keep gunning and slowly peck away at the battleship, and especially the destroyers, than slow down, quickly sink the destroyers, and make myself a much easier target for the Hanover. See, these DDs just aren't trying. They could be so much more dangerous, and they're not doing it. Does this battleship have hydro? Yes, it has sonar 3. Oh. That's going to make torpedoes attack more complicated. Now, the torpedoes that I have have a less visibility of minus 65%. And the DDs are now far enough away that I think I can risk doing a torpedo attack. Palace, four torpedo launchers, target, battleship. Torpedoes away. Invincible, same. Target, battleship. Torpedo when ready. Open up the range again, because I'm now down to nine kilometers. Invincible, torpedo when ready. V3 still hasn't torpedoed. V2 did. Ooh, Invincible just got hit. Torpedoes away. Furious. Open up the range again, let the torpedoes run for a while. Just try to let those things do the damage. Flooding, again? How am I penetrating this ship and where? The bow belt. Really? How much bow belt extended armor do you have? 9.3. Oh shit, the Invincible is going down. Invincible, detach from the division and fall back. Furious and Palace, pick up the pace. We need to make sure that the ship survives for long enough. Unfortunately, drawing fire or something to that extent is not possible. But getting torpedoed by the DDs would really finish off the already wounded uh, Invincible. The structural integrity is down to 35%. Both engines are out. She might still reach about 19 knots, though. Secondaries on Palace and Furious target the V3. I think the V2 already has issues at the moment, but is not posing a threat, and the V3 is. She's getting much closer. First couple of torpedoes are landing. The Hanover now has a bit of flooding, but it seems really mediocre. There is another salvo incoming, and yet more 
from the second line. But I'm not sure how much this is actually going to help. Sure, she's flooding. And it looks like I might land another five torpedoes. She has detected the torpedoes and is trying to avoid, but too late. And 127,000 tons doesn't turn on a dime. So this is where the anti-torpedo protection comes in. One, two, three, four, five. It seems like the amount of flooding that you do has been decreased. Because this seemed to be more of a structural integrity issue than anything else. There's another torpedo salvo out from the palace. That's good. Oh shit, I'm not the only one sending out torpedoes. Palace. That's going to be a problem. Either I charge by it. Or I avoid it. Ooh, yeah, I'm fine. Still, maintain range. Hanover, down to 50%. All flooding is just negated. And since she was already turning, all the torpedoes have missed. That is unfortunate. Can we please finish off this destroyer here? That'll make it a bit easier for me to maneuver and not have to worry about torpedoes all the time. More importantly, these ships are starting to detect the torpedoes long before they could even impact the Hanover. So, trying to torpedo the Hanover at this point is pretty useless. Now, it does seem like the Hanover is trying to fall back. And that's good. That means all of those bow turrets are useless. It does still look like this bow turret is completely clipping through the main structure. That's a bit sad. I was hoping that they patched that out as well. Hold on. Torpedo in the water. Here. Palace. No, we're going to have to just continue on with the turn. And hope that the Furies doesn't accidentally get hit. Crap, there's more. Furious? Wait, one. No, 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 no. That's Palace. Furious. I'm probably going to eat a torpedo here. Furious. Hit. There's more. See, the Hydro is effective at detecting the torpedoes a bit earlier. But not a hell of a lot earlier. Furious is flooding and her engine... No, her rudder is damaged. Now, it looks like the German battleship is on the back foot. But that can still change. Because I have seen battleships which were down to 10% structural integrity and which just refused to sink. They just flat out refused to die. Peck away at this destroyer with the main guns. I just need one hit. It's 15 inch shells. They do about, what is that, 2000? So, sorry, 13,000 damage. Invincible is really doing poorly, but at least is making itself out of the battle. I want you to rejoin Division 1. They might be too far away at this point, but hey, at least they're alive. Come on, Palace. 6.3%. I just need one good land. One good 15-inch shell hit. What the fuck was that? Shells here and shells over there. That was weird. Again, just bracketing the destroyer but not doing anything serious against it. Oh, it's smoking up again. And so is the V2. V3 seemingly has launched another set of torpedoes at me. I'm not sure when. I'm pretty sure it was against the palace though, so let's have the palace turn a bit more. Make her a bit difficult to hit. What are these guns? Look at that. It's like they just fire all over the place against this destroyer. Fire. 
that's a bit better. That's a lot better. She still has 1184 shells left, so trying to have the battleship run out of firepower is going to take a long, long, long time. Especially since she only fires every 54 seconds. She does about one round a minute. A little over. But that means that I have to just keep kiting her for the next 10 hours before she gets close to running out of ammo. Come on, the ship is down to 30, 29, 27. There's a torpedo. Presumably part of that salvo that it launched. Yes, 1600 damage. That's it, right there. Flooding, the whole ship's burning down. That's it, one hit from a 16-inch shell. 15-inch shell. Bingo. Now the V2. And then I don't have to worry about torpedoes at all. Now this ship is not fast anymore. That's going to make it far more easy to hit. There we go. It's only doing 15-3. Two damaged engines and a fire and a flooding. So she should be slowing down. 14-8, 14-6, 14-5, 14-3. Is that going to kill her? It is not. 13 2, 13. Three engines damaged. Palace, come to port. Structural integrity, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0. Ship destroyed. Okay, buddy, that just leaves you. Hanover. Oof. That was painful. It was one hit for 455. Took an, a 20% chunk out of this ship. Yikes. Now let's see if I can zigzag a bit and try to land a lot more torpedoes on them. Or at least launch the torpedoes. That's the starboard set. Yeah. Now, how fast are these? 37.5. My ship is doing 36. So arguably I won't be able to hit myself. But stranger things have happened in this game. And I should really keep my distance against it. Put torpedoes away from Palace. Hold on, is that, that's not all of them. Did I lose a torpedo, to one? torpedo launcher? No. There. That's the stern launcher. Alright, Palace, turn away. Uh, furious. I'm going to detach her from the div. And have you go manual. Here's a torpedo salvo, potentially from the Furious. Seeing as the palace is too far away. Yeah, this, this, and this is salvos from the palace. Alright, palace, we're gonna stay at range. And just take small bites out of this battleship. And hope that I'm gonna be the one doing the biting. And not the one just getting chunked for 1500 damage. When a random 17 inch shell hits and penetrates either of my battle cruisers. She's not fast. She's only doing 17-1 with a top speed of 27. Top armor, 23 inches on the turret. She's firing back with 4 inch and 7 inch. How close am I? 8, 9 kilometers. Yeah, I'm getting way too close here. Very uncomfortable for this ship. Torpedoes away. Oh, Jesus. Furious, that's pretty risky. I think that was her port bow launcher. But I almost sailed into those torps myself. Furious, come back. I'm going to try and get the starboard torpedoes away. There we go. Where are those torpedo salvos? Here. Here and here. Alright. Invincible. Safely out of the fight. Thankfully, the Fury still has a rudder, although slightly less effective than it normally would be. Palace. I want you to maintain range at about 11 clicks and just go broadside. Alright, Hanover's flooding again. 
How are you doing, buddy? Accuracy is almost 7%, but if you have 12, 18 guns, that's a lot more risky. She probably spotted the torpedoes by now. Yeah, about a minute ago. And it looks like I might only land one hit from the first salvo. And potentially one here. Yeah, okay, 71 damage. That is it. She has anti-torpedo 5. She has maximum anti-torpedo protection. Yeah, no wonder these torpedoes aren't landing hard. Narrowly avoided that one. I mean, these are big torpedoes. This is 24 inch. But it just isn't enough. Her anti-torpedo protection is too good. We might land another one here. 105. She's flooding again. A bit. There is more on the way. But seeing as she's already trying to evade the other torpedoes, I'd be surprised if I'm going to be able to land a few more. Yeah, that's another two torpedo hits. She's now starting to flood. Structural integrity down to 34%. This battle is still not done yet. Right, here's the torpedo salvo, but unless she turns back to port, not a lot of those will hit. Maybe this one, but these are just in vain. Firing at Furious. Invincible is still firing at her. Nice. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting that Invincible would actually disengage entirely and just not be able to, to take part in this fight at all. But no, she's still here. Yeah, she spotted another bunch of torpedoes. And a 32% speed, 14.8. I think I'm going to have a problem with the amount of shells that I brought. I only brought 202 shells. Or that's what I have left. Um, I still have a lot of torpedoes, but I really don't want to get too close to Hanover and try to get those delivered up close so I can land more of them, because that'll kill the ship. Ship is a 12-7. That's just in torpedo range, but she's heading away from me. So trying to launch torpedoes right now doesn't really help me. More flooding. This time on the bow. Furious. Furious is at 17. I need to get her a bit closer because I'm probably going to need her guns. At least her guns, but oh shit. But also her torpedoes. Torpedoes away from Pallas. Pallas back hard. Pallas is trying to execute a turn at a speed of 34 knots. Everything that's not bolted down to the deck is probably sliding around it. At least she's not flooding. Pallas attempt starboard torpedo launch. Starboard torpedoes launched. Palace. Oh shit, now she is flooding. Palace. Rudder is damaged. Oh no. This makes her very, very vulnerable because she does not have her maneuverability. And more importantly, she's starting to lose speed. 31.9, 31.8. She's going to drop to 27 knots. Which makes her a pretty easy snack for the Hanover. Curious status. Range. 18 clicks out. Oh no, Palace is going down. Palace just took another chunk for 445 damage. If you have a rudder, try to stop doing circles. Twenty-seven percent structural integrity on the Hanover. Keep in mind, though, that even if I add up all my battle cruisers, 
I still don't have the displacement that this ship does. And we did land five torpedoes on the Hanover. More flooding. Buoyancy to 43%, 42. There's more incoming. 37. Come on, Palace. I just need you to survive a little longer. But with three damaged engine and a damaged rudder, that's not very likely. One, two, three. No, she avoided the third. Buoyancy, 25%, 24%, 23%. <laughs> Palace has a rudder. But looks unable to continue to successfully repair her engines. Oh, more flooding. Palace is gone. Oh, that means I lost the scenario. Because it wasn't all or nothing. If you do not bring in all your ships, if not all of them make it back, you lose the scenario. That was the condition. So the Hanover, and thus the Germans, win this one. Ah, oh, that sucks. That sucks. Now again, if you have a scenario of your own, be sure to send it in the, the, through the link down below in the description. That's the way that I accept the scenarios, and the comments just are not going to be used anymore. I know that that means that you cannot upvote the comment section anymore or the scenarios that you really want, so the filtering is going to come down more to me. Um, so be it. At least it's going to make sure that you don't get as disappointed, hopefully. Know, however, that I get a lot of scenarios sent to me and that just repeatedly sending in your scenario is not going to work. Moreover, it's going to be um, counterproductive. It just means that I'm going to get annoyed and that I'll just start ignoring those scenarios altogether. So just sending your scenario once, it's going to go into my database, and if I like it, and if I think it's viable, I'll turn it into a video. Now, that was all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the battle. I think that Alpha 7 has potential to make a lot of interesting ships, like this monstrosity here. And, um, well, I'll see you guys very soon in another video, where we can see what else the AI can whip up. See you then.